baseball's oldest franchises, from their legendary brawls in the 80s to their memorable playoff games. These two teams have been rivals for decades. Last night of the wild card matchup, the Giants struck first and took game one of the series. Tonight, they go for a second straight win over the Cardinals. Back at it on this Friday night. Giants a 6-2 win last night over the St. Louis Cardinals. It's time for game two of the big showdown four-game series here on an Orange Friday. And welcome to the broadcast booth. Greg Papa alongside Mike Kruko. Last night we knew what we were getting, Mike. Two of the most accomplished right-handers in baseball the last eight years. Johnny Cueto against Adam Wainwright tonight. The great unknown. 23-year-old Luke Weaver will pitch for the Cardinals. The Giants have never faced him. Matt Moore has never pitched against the Cardinals. So I think they kind of wipe each other out. I, I know that the one thing you're always concerned about when you see a new pitcher like the Giants will see with Luke Weaver is what's he got and he's got a great changeup. So that is concerned if he's getting that thing over uh, for Matt Moore. He's throwing great ball coming off a start where he had 11 strikeouts against the Arizona Diamondbacks pitching with a lot of confidence and uh, and the Giants now they, they got they got some 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 reputation. I mean it, it happens so fast in this game. One good game gives you offensive confidence and it seems to me like they have it hopefully they can bring it in tonight's ball game against young Luke Weaver and we'll see how it goes same routine for Bruce Bochy no on field BP tonight he will go with the same lineup game two Matt Moore against Luke Weaver as we get set for a big Friday night of baseball stay tuned we'll go back to our CSN Bay Area studios for an update from Ahmed Farid and Sean Estes right after these messages.
to two victory over the St. Louis Cardinals and they gain a game on the Cardinals in that National League wildcard race as they get set for game two of this four game series. Welcome back to our broadcast. I'm Amy Gutierrez and your San Francisco Giants. They need to get on a roll and Johnny Cueto did his best to jumpstart this club last night giving them a complete game this evening. Matt Moore getting the nod and if he does anything remotely close to his last outing these boys are good. Moore was superb last Sunday in Arizona. He struck out 11 batters in seven innings. He was dominant. He gave up just two runs on eight hits and he's pumped to be a San Francisco Giant and in contention. He said it's exciting to wake up in the morning and know where we are. He's going to take on rookie Luke Weaver this evening. You get Greg Papa and Mike Kruka and we're going to see if the Giants can make some more room in that National League wild card race lineups. First pitch all coming up. At AT and T Park, Greg Papa, Mike Kruko, Amy Gutierrez. Let's check out the starting lineup for Mike Matheny's St. Louis Cardinals. Brought to you by Audi. Visit a Bay Area Audi dealer today and get behind the wheel of the Audi model you've always wanted. Against the lefty Matt Moore, he will make some subtle changes. Matt Carpenter will lead off. Aledmus Diaz, the Cuban emigre, all-star at mid-year, coming back off the DL will bat second. Stephen Piscotti from Stanford. Jed Jerko, who had second last night, will bat cleanup tonight. Yadier Molina very slow first half but he's come alive since the all star break Johnny Peralta is the only Cardinal that has seen Matt Moore before he's two for five against him with a double Randall Gritchick in center Tommy Pham will make the start in left and it's 23 year old rookie Luke Weaver Mike who will duel Matt Moore tonight in game two well indeed Matt Moore on the hill tonight for the Giants Matt Moore 27 years old 6 3 210 pounder he's in his fifth year at the big league level this is what he has done combining his years with the Rays and the Giants 10 and 11 and 29 starts with a 4 0 ERA 157 strikeouts against 66 walks and you're going to see four different looks from him a fastball that goes low to mid 90s more mids than lows and occasionally he'll even hit a nerve and go 96 97 his 
Change up is one he throws off of a split finger grip. He's got a great curveball, and now he's throwing a, a cut fastball, which has been, become a very good pitch for him. He's never faced the St. Louis Cardinals, so this is his maiden appearance against the Cardinals. And what do you say we take a look at the defense playing behind Matt Moore tonight for the Giants, starting in their outfield from left to right? It'll be Pagan, Span, and Pence, the best arm in right field. Crawford and Nunez on the left side of the infield. Joe Panic joined by Brandon Bell on the right side. And Buster Posey, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Giants a 6 to 2 winner last night behind the brilliant five hit complete game effort of Johnny Cueto. Giants had 12 hits last night. Buster banged out four of them. And Carpenter saying hello to Buster Posey, fellow All Stars. Laz Diaz will have home plate tonight. We're waiting for 715. Everybody's ready to go. Well, we got a TV's back, Mike. We're ready. Can't well, blame it on us. It's a minute late. I mean, the big clock here is a minute late. Play ball. Yeah, it's time. <laughs> Lots of respect between these two teams, as you can imagine. They played a lot of big games, but neither team likes to lose to the other one. Yep, this should be a good game. And a good rest of the series. Well, up until last year, Mike, when the Mets broke through and won the National League pennant, these two teams uh, won the previous five. First pitch of the ball game for Matt Moore is a called strike to Matt Carpenter, who went 0 for 3 last night with a walk. Big start for Matt Moore, arguably his biggest as a giant, although that one hitter at Dodger Stadium was pretty large. Good breaking ball there for a called strike, too. Yeah, when you have a, a curveball that, that is as big as his, it's important that you establish you can get it over and throw it for a strike early in the game. He just did. That was a good one. Everybody on the top step of the dugout tonight. Playoff feel again. Matt Carpenter with a base hit through the shifted right side of the giant infielder. Such a smooth, controlled swing from Carpenter. This is an 0 2 count. He gets a second breaking ball, gets that foot down early. And look at the one piece. When you look at his shoulder and his left knee, that all comes out at the same time. His hips rotate right through it. It is a great swing, a very controlled swing. Hard for me to believe that coming into this game, he's hitting 272 when you see a swing like that. Yeah, he hit 318 back in 2013, Mike. His average the last couple of years is uh, Ledmus Diaz, interestingly. He's a power hitter, tried to push a bunt up the first baseline. But Carpenter became a power hitter last year, hit 28 homers. and. Has 19 this year. And Led Miss Diaz was hit by a pitch in early August thrown by Andrew Kashner of the Marlins. And he was on the disabled list. Just came back this week, homered on Tuesday. Was not in last night. He's not quite able to play every day. Here's a ground ball to Nunez in between hop. Panic's got one. Double play. Beautifully done by Nunez and Joe Panic. Every part of that play was fantastic. It's kind of an in-between hop coming in up on Nunez. When Panic gets the ball, his feet are spread to the side of the base, and he's got to kind of toe tap with his left foot. Great feed. Make sure he gets that that bag touched, and then he makes the throw. It's nice to have a shortstop arm when you're a second baseman. Well, two outs now for Steven Piscotti. Take a look at that feed from Nunez again. There's the short hop. Perfect. And really kind of a flat footed throw from Panic. He still has lots of oomph on the fastball to first base. Well, it's good to see right away, Mike. The Giants hit the ball last night. They had, they had 12 hits, timely hits, had a home run from Hunter Pence. Cueto was obviously great, but they also played a very strong defensive game. Last night was their most complete game they played in a while. Yeah, they showed up, no doubt. Well, they knew they had to. I mean, they. Were pretty low after the three game sweep to losing to all three to the Padres. Last night, a different team. Bruce Bochy was in a good mood today before the game, did not have on field batting practice again. Piscotti fouls that off, staying at one and two. Well, I just think it's instinctive for baseball players when they're losing games and they're not playing well to try and work themselves out of it. And for that, for, for ball players, that means get there early, more reps in the cage, and Bruce Bochy quite simply went the other way. Get away from the yard, get off your legs, rest. And not only did he do it yesterday, he did it today. 
He did admit it was probably half and half that the guys needed the rest today and more just superstitious. You won last night. You're going to do the same thing tonight. And a lot of the guys were on the field getting a little work in before the game. And of course they hit underneath the cage. Up the uh, dugout runway back towards the clubhouse. Well, they're going to get loose. I mean, they're going to go and do their tee work and their soft toss, and they'll hit off the curveball machine. And we, they all have their own little recipe about how to how to get ready for a game. They're just not going to be standing around the field taking ground balls. Swing and a miss. Got Piscotti off balance. One, two, three. With the double play ball in between, he retires the first three hitters with the double play. Giants will bat in the bottom of the first when we come back. Set, but a double play ball and a strikeout for Matt Moore. And the Giants come to bat at the bottom of the first. Giants starting lineup sponsored by Southwest Transparency. Low fares, nothing to hide. Exact same lineup as last night. Pagan, Panic, Posey, Hunter Pence, Brandon Belt, Brandon Crawford, Eduardo Nunez, Denard Span, a big two run single late last night. And uh, Matt Moore will bat number nine against a 23 year old rookie right hander, Luke Weaver. Luke Weaver. A baby by big league standards, but when you look at what he has done in a short time, he has established himself as a strike thrower. You're going to see a low 90s fastball, curveball slider, and a changeup. Really good changeup. More sliders than curveballs. 39 strikeouts in 31 innings against eight walks. And just rifled through the Cardinals' farm system to get the big leagues. Now he was a number one draft pick of the Cardinals out of Florida State University the 27th overall pick just uh, in 2014 was an A ball last year double A triple A this year good numbers everywhere and they called him up late this year and put him right in the rotation there's a strike to Angel Pagan. Last D is the plate umpire is a low ball umpire and uh, his zone at times can be tight and his corners can breathe they can be big one inning they can be tight the next but he likes the low pitch. And Weaver will give you a lot of low pitches, Mike. That fastball is a sinker will be low in the zone. The changeup will be low. Everybody on the top step of the dugout watching Weaver intently. They'd never seen him before. And there was his changeup. The one thing, if you, you're the Giants, you know this kid's going to be around the plate. He's only walked eight, as you mentioned, versus the 39 strikeouts. He's a strike thrower. Again, reaching for that one will slash it foul to stay at two and two. Oh, that family has been rewarded. Nice catch, Dad. Got their seats early, ready for the first inning. That a bad. Going dead. Pagan will slice one foul again down the left field line. 
is getting a pretty good look at what this kid has. Weaver really loads up on the first base side about as far as you could get over that first base side of the rubber. That's where Adam Wainwright was last night. Struck him out on a high fastball. One away. Let's take a look at that Cardinal defense playing behind Weaver starting in the outfield from left to right. It'll be Pham, Gritchick, and Viscotti. Scotty with the best arm. Gritchick almost as good. Diaz and Peralta on the left side of the infield. Jerko and Carpenter on the right side. And then Yadi Molina, he'll be in the squad putting down the signs. Here's Joe Panic, who took an 0 for 5 last night. Elevated up to the two hole. So Angel Pagan was able to see seven pitches against him, even though he struck out he got a lot of looks and able to give his teammates a lot of looks against this guy. There's a strike. No problem put a quality location on a 2 0 pitch pretty straight away defense. On the right side of the field, they do play Diaz, the third baseman, well off the line. There's a strike. Change up. Buster Posey, a four hit game last night. Struck him out on a high fastball at 94 miles per hour. So a little reach back velocity there, cruising at 91, 93, and then all of a sudden a two strike count. Pump up, go right above the hands at 94. That's a good pitch. So two strikeouts in the payoff pitch both times for Weaver has been the high fastball across the letters. So he doesn't look to me like he's got a huge adrenaline surge going right now. <laughs> He looks very calm and poised. Throwing darts with that fastball. Now he'll face Buster Posey. Buster fights that off foul. Take a look at the very compact motion of Luke Weaver. 6'2, 170 pound. Gets that foot down early, high three quarter position. I mean, a lot of similarities in hitting and pitching and getting that foot down. Really sets up the balance of your release. And for a pitcher, it's a catapult. With his arm, for a, for a hitter, it's, it's really a, a, a catapult with the bat. But the mechanics of the lower body are almost identical. Posey fouled that last pitch right off the mask of Yadier Molina. Gave him a moment to gather himself. Hunter Pence waiting on deck. New York Mets have already won their game today over the Minnesota Twins by a score of three to nothing. Bartolo Colon went seven scoreless. Luke Weaver strikes out the side. A couple of high fastballs to Pagan and Panic. He gets Buster out of the changeup. Very impressive. End of one, zero, zero.
16 postseason tickets available for possible games to be played here at AT&T Park. And you can register at sfgiants.com slash postseason for the opportunity to purchase tickets to each round. Registrants will be selected at random. Registration for WC and NLDS tickets is open until noon this Sunday. Again, that's sfgiants.com slash postseason to register. The WC would be the wild card. Which right now the Giants lead. And the New York Mets with their win tonight at home over the Twins 3 nothing have cut the giant lead over the Mets the second wild card team to a half game. Cardinals are two back of the Giants. Jed Jerko drives one to left center field got under a little bit though and Denard Spain will come over and put it away one out. Time for Toyota by the numbers. Wouldn't it be nice to drive California's most trusted cars? Visit your local Toyota dealer for great deals today. Toyota let's go places talking about Buster Posey and the catcher's ERA second lowest in the National League uh, to all star of the Nationals Wilson Ramos. Yadier Molina who usually leads that every year Mike checks in at number five almost four at three point eight nine. So to your point about Buster breaking through and winning the gold glove this year throwing out base runners and a lower ERA as Yachty pops this one up to paint it two outs. A couple of quick outs here for Matt Moore in the second. This is an aggressive swinging Cardinals team. They like to jump on pitchers early in the count. Philosophy is very simple. Get a good pitch to hit. Certainly did last night with Johnny Cueto but it kind of worked against him. They had uh, three eight pitch innings Mike and Johnny was able to throw a complete game on just one hundred and five pitches last night. So there is an arrogance about the Cardinals. I mean, you know, this is a team that hits a lot of home runs. Again, they just want a good pitch to hit. A lot of teams, their philosophy is to get a lot of pitches out of the, the starter, get in that bullpen as early as you can. These guys, they just want to bang. You see John Mabry, their hitting instructor, very, very solid hitting instructor. Their whole coaching staff is outstanding. But it's simple. Get a good pitch to hit. There's Mabry and their assistant hitting coach is former giant Bill Miller. Peralta shallow center Denard Spain will not get there. It's a blue base hit for Peralta. Peralta again the only Cardinal in the lineup tonight that has seen more before being a former American leaguer with the Indians and Tigers and he's now three for six career against Moore. Randall Gritchick, Cardinal center fielder, had a good game last night. He doubled and singled, scored a run, and drove in their second run. After he got his base hit to tie the game at two in the fourth inning, Johnny Cueto did not allow another base runner. He ended the game by retiring the last 17 Cardinals. Well, it was a pleasure to watch the man work last night. The way that he mixed speed, location, his wind up just kept him off balance. He's had so many great outings as a giant Johnny Cueto last night may have been the very best because it was the the most needed. Beautiful night tonight. It's the hardest moon. Getting that time of the year huh. Absolutely is. Seen a lot of good baseball under a harvest moon in this ballpark. You know, we want to wish all the folks in the wine industry up all through Northern California a great harvest. It's crushing season up there. Keep working your magic, folks. Two one pitch. Strike. Good change up. You know it's a good change of point. That doesn't get a swing off on it. 
And he was paralyzed. More long set. Chopper to Crawford. He will flip to Panic, who was overshifted and right on the bag anyway. So Matt Moore allows a two out hit, gets out of it unscored, 0 0 after one and a half. Guest before the game. You are looking at Kevin Durant, the newest Golden State Warrior. He was signed in July. Larry Bear hanging out with them. And of course, he's got to meet the players. They're so stoked to meet Kevin Durant. And, you know, he's got to show some talent out there. He's going to throw the ceremonial first pitch. Now, the giant most excited to meet Kevin Durant. Brandon Crawford longtime Warriors fans guys I talked to him about it he said he was so excited when the Warriors signed him he's always been a fan of Kevin even when he wasn't with the Golden State Warriors he's a great basketball player but more importantly Brandon loves how he plays the game he also said guys he's a big fan of his jersey number yeah I think they had a jersey swap in the giant clubhouse before the game of 35s Hunter Pence had a nice conversation with him earlier still can't believe Durantula is a warrior how cool is that? That is very cool. And when do they start? A week from Tuesday. Holy smokes. They go to training camp. He just got back from Brazil in the Olympics, winning a gold medal for Team USA with his new Warrior teammates, Raymond Green and Clay Thompson. It was great. He threw out the first pitch, and Albert Suarez caught the pitch. And I mean, what you do is, if you're a ball player, a big leaguer, you you then get the ball, you sign it, you give it to whoever threw it. <laughs> And a strikeout for Luke Weaver. He has opened the game by striking out the first four giant hitters. Three on fastballs, one on a changeup. Well, when Suarez went to sign the ball, he looked up at Durant and he goes, Wait a second, would you please sign this for me? <laughs> Which he should. Yeah. Kevin Durant is such a nice guy. I remember years ago, Mike, when he was here for a night game against the Warriors, you guys were playing a day game. He came to the booth, visited with you and Kype, and he hung out like the entire game. Well, he had so many questions about baseball. He was absolutely intrigued. And the one question at the time, the Giants were playing well, the Padres were not. He says, "Well, Padres don't have a very good record. You guys will win this one." And he said, "It doesn't work that way in baseball." Yeah. Well, Luke Weaver is just going right through the Giant lineup tonight. Suarez <laughs> started to sign it, and then he realized, "Wait a second, Durantula." He is one big guy. They list him at six nine, but he's really like six twelve. Yeah, he's a seven footer. He's a wingspan of seven five. Belt got jammed. Little blooper to center. It'll drop for a base hit. First giant base runner of the night. First giant to put one in play against Luke Weaver. It all started with the blue. And the blast. We got the Kevin Durant numeral 35 mojo, and that'll bring on Brandon Crawford here.
Cardinals and any team we've seen Mike shift the least. They pretty much play a straight away. They'll do some on the infield like the third baseman Peralta's off the line for Crawford but they don't they don't give you a lot of exaggerated infield overships. Big swing by Crawford. Well we just saw two teams that played the Giants the Padres and the Diamondbacks they, they shift more than anybody. It's unbelievable that they shift in the same bat or the same at bat twice. Depending on the count. Depending on the, like with Crawford yeah. gets a two strike count and everybody goes over to the right side. Up the middle big hop right to the shortstop Diaz and that'll be a double play. He was shaded up the middle a bit so the Giants get a blue pit from belt but Weaver gets a double play Matt Moore back to work 0 0 after two. Future Focus X1 will change the way you experience TV only from Xfinity and we look at the Giants second round draft pick this year out of Vanderbilt outfielder Brian Reynolds began at the short season Salem Kaiser level hit the ball well there they elevate him to Augusta full season a hit the ball well there got up late to San Jose advanced a three playoff games hit the ball well there four for 12 with a solo home run which will mean he'll probably start next year at uh, San Jose the little Giants. That's a good start to his professional career. Tommy Pham in the lineup tonight for Mike Matheny. And the pitcher Luke Weaver in the top of the order. Matt Carpenter. Matt Moore 2-0 to Pham. That's a fair ball down the line. A tough play. A backhand by Nunez. His fan is safe. Well, Tommy Pham runs very well. And the very fact that Nunez even made it close is remarkable. Playing back, and you've got to run a long way. But when you have a very strong arm like he has, I mean, he just thinks that there's aren't many plays that he can't make. Well, he felt he was coming in too hard to barehand that ball, but once he gloved it, he really had no chance to get him. So that'll set it up for the pitcher, Luke Weaver, to bunt, although he could swing the bat, Mike. He is four for 11 as a big leaguer as a hitter. And a stabs at that one for a strike. Giants are crashing hard. Nunez from third, Belt from first. Well, he's so good with a bat that they would not hesitate putting a play on him. They, they might hit and run with him. They I think he's going to get a fastball, which is what you normally get when you're. Pitch you do a, a guy in the bunt situation want to throw high fastballs. And they butcher boy it here, pull it back. They throw to first to see that he did square. 
I think you should square early. Square early, you stop that guy at third base, and it's much easier if you're already out there to come back and then go into the butcher boy. He squares early. Nunez and Bell crash. He pulls it back. One ball, one strike. I mean, it's not like you're trying to surprise anybody. And a lot of guys, I think they put themselves in a bad position to bunt when they show late. Get out there. Show the bat. By doing so, you'll eliminate the hard crashers from both both lines. Shows again. And again, pushes it foul. So now he's got two strikes on him. Well, again, because he can swing the bat a little bit. You have to think they may let him swing here with two strikes. Hasn't exactly looked that stellar trying to bunt. Long pause. He's not showing Vaughn. Now he does late, pulls it back. So Mike Matheny, the skipper of the card, will stand with the bunt. And he's giving Chris Maloney a long look. Chris Maloney normally coaches first base. Jose Akendo is out with a knee procedure. So Maloney over at third base for this series. Oh, he threw it away. Tried to pick him off quickly, and Matt Moore throws it wide to Brandon Bell. So Pham goes to second base on the air. That's the first air this team's made in a while. And this becomes a big one. Just a little snap throw. Mm. Bell got a glove on it. Well, Bell kind of had his momentum coming back as he moves to his right. Now he, he kind of locks his feet and doesn't have a whole lot of slide to his left there coming back. Trying to backhand that thing. So a 90 foot gift here, and that means that Weaver now will have a chance to swing the bat. Now he strikes out, so that serves as a bunt, although he didn't get it down. One away. All right, time now for our Chrysler Pacifica play of the game. Last night, Brandon Crawford defensively in the top of the second, caught a line drive off the bat of Johnny Peralta, then in the ninth. He was a backhand jump throw to throw out Yade Molina, one of the better plays we saw all night. And Johnny Cueto liked that. Play of the game brought to you by the all new 2017 Chrysler. Pacifica it takes comfort, storage, and technology to the next level, making Pacifica the new benchmark of minivans. And a gold glove caliber play by Brandon Crawford. That air by Matt Moore breaks a 11 game airless streak for the Giants. In fact, uh, coming into the game tonight, they just made one air. In their last 30 games. And Carpenter on an 0 2 pitch single to center his first time up. Nice pick there by posing the ball in the dirt. Carpenter the same routine every time a lean back right before the pitch. A couple times. Change up low. Remember in his first at bat he saw a couple curveballs in a row had, had an 0-2 base hit off of Matt Moore. So that does stay in your mind if you're pitching to him. And Moore is really working at a slow pace tonight. So he had runners on every inning. Tommy Pham can really run at second base. 2 1 pitch. Carpenter. Panic will take it. Belt will have to get to first now. Pham over to third base. Two outs. Well, 
Well, it's one of those places where you, you kind of get caught rocking a hard place if you're Brandon Bell. I mean, you want to get everything you can to your right, but then all of a sudden you realize that, wait, this is going to get caught by the second base, but now I have to get back to the base. Now, Carpenter was not going that hard. He's yeah. not 100% with his legs, so he can't normally with his speed. That would have been a very close play. Matt Moore did get off the mound quickly. He would have been there had Bill not gotten in time. Now, let Miss Diaz. He bounced into a 5 4 3 double play his first time up. Nice pitch on the inside corner. A fastball for a strike. Pitcher strike right there. Diaz not happy with that call, but you're Matt Moore, you go right back in there again. And you could do it with cut. Now, that's a straight fastball with a four seam grip. He can go right back in that side of the plate with. with with a cut fastball, he's got to cover it now that it, that last one was called a strike. Muster moving in again. It's a good pitch right there. Let's see exactly what they were thinking. Two and one. Buster sets up away. Diaz will pull it in the hole. Crawford plants and shoots him out. Diaz safe. They call him safe at first. And Pham scores. Corey Blazer with the call over at first base. This is one that they're definitely going to review. Brandon Belt came off the base immediately and said check it. So he thought they got him. They did. He's out. Yeah, he's out. That's coming I, back. When I watched it live, I thought he was out, but Diaz really made that close. Incredibly close coming out of the box as a right handed hitter, Mike, for him to make it that close was impressive. They are going to review this, and it should be overturned rather quickly. Take a look at it from this angle. Hmm. Yeah, he's out. Right foot did not hit the bag. Well I agree with you but again you know we've learned that you don't 100 percent trust what often gets determined in New York. It's pretty clear there the balls in the webbing of the glove and the foot's not on the base. You would think. Well the original the initial call by well, Corey Blazer was safe. Giants outfield just watched the replay and they're all starting to mosey back towards the Giants dugout so that's how they interpret it. And I think in the end that the folks back in New York will interpret it the same way. Or Diaz, though, really put a lot of heat on that play. Well, Brandon Crawford had to unload. He's out. This is taking a while for Manhattan to come up with a ruling. Matt Moore continues to throw just to stay loose in case. We're going to have a decision here. He's out. Inning over. And Ledmus Diaz made it close, but he is out. Tommy Pham does not score. Crawford gets his man. It is still 0 0 as the Giants come to bat at the bottom of the third.
choice. Last night, Johnny Cueto was magnificent. A complete game, five hitter. Got a couple of earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. It was his fifth complete game of the season, and that's a career high, and that is tied for most majors with Chris Sale of the White Sox. And Ford right choice. The new Ford F-150 is the official truck of Madison Bumgarner. It's built Ford tough. Learn more at your CaliforniaFord.com. Vintage Johnny Cueto performance, the five complete games, Mike, the most by a giant pitcher since Jason Schmidt back in 2003. And he was one of the best pitchers in the National League. He's got five, Mike. <laughs> Look at the Bumgarner's got four. The rest are entire pitching staffs. Got nine from two guys. Eduardo Nunez to right center field and well struck. Piscotti will come over and put it away. One out. Jeffrey Leonard was here before the game. Jeffrey and his wife Karen. Eduardo Nunez facially looks a lot like Jeffrey Leonard, doesn't he? Looking yeah. at him straight on. What if he's got a one flap down trot? <laughs> if you have one, not a bad team to break it out against. Jeffrey is smiling a lot more since he's no longer playing. So when he gives you the big smile and Nunez gives you the smile, you can see so it. He's a big teddy bear. Didn't find that out till he was done playing, though. <laughs> well, he has a heart of gold. Penitentiary face, right? <laughs> the nicknames of Hank for you. It's serious. <laughs> Got his game face on. Bernard Span with a swing and a miss. One ball, one strike. Span continues to hit in the eight hole, even though he had a very productive night last night with a couple of hits. That big uh, two run single to the seventh inning stretched the lead from four to two to six to two. Well, he wasn't all that happy moving out of the first spot to the eighth spot. He hasn't done it since he was a rookie. But you know what? I always thought that a, a, an eighth place hitter does really well when they are ticked off. It's a great mindset to have when you're hitting eighth. Coach said uh, he's going to leave him there for a little while, though he was impressed with his at bats last night. Count is three and one. Matt Moore waiting on deck in the top of the order and Angel Pagan. And it's a little high, ball four. Giants baseball is brought to you in part by McDonald's. Get great deals at McDonald's with the McD app. Download the McD app on your smartphone and get great deals at participating Greater Bay Area McDonald's. Visit McDapp.com. Craig Papa, Mike Kruko, Amy Gutierrez on this Orange Friday, game two of this big four game series. With the Giants winning last night now, this season series is tied 2-2. They got three more this weekend, so whoever wins the rest of these games over the weekend, either three more or two to one, they will win the season series, which could impact a tiebreaker. She's got her orange on. I think so. Bit. Yes, I do. More squares to bunt, gets it down, nicely done. Yachty will go high, and it's off the glove of the shortstop Diaz. You don't see Yachty or Molina do that too often. Spain is safe. I think Gunnar Span is asked to second base umpire. Well, you know, no noise. So there's a little obstruction going on right here. You want to get up and go to third base and tangled with Diaz. But if you're middle infielder, you know what? Just sort of lay down and get in the way. Well, he tripped him. Absolutely, he did. I mean, that's a veteran play. I mean, that is an experienced middle infielder play. Just kind of get in there and just kind of. Throw his leg out. Do whatever you can to prevent that guy from going. And that's exactly what Span's saying. And he pushed him a little bit trying to get him off of him. Hip but check. Diaz. Total hip check. So it's a fielder's choice in a throwing air on the eight time gold glover Yadier Molina. I didn't know that Cuba had a hockey team because <laughs> uh, Ledmus just threw the best hip check we've seen all, all summer. Two minutes for boarding. And there's Angel Pagan now first and second. Draws the walk. 
and the throwing air sets it up for the top of the order now. Pagat struck out his first time up and he got blown away on a high fastball for strike three. Well, he's got a plan now. Before the only thing he had going for him was video. Now after having seen Weaver he'll have a clue as to how he wants to hit him. Two and out. And with a guy with a changeup, though, you, you, even if you're behind, if you're ahead to count 2 0, 1 0, 3 1 as a hitter, if you don't have a lot of at bats against him, you still don't let out shaft. And that's what the changeup does. It does. It'll take swing out. It, it, it counts where you have an advantage. Because one thing we know about Weaver is he will throw all of his pitches in any count. Three and 0. Joe Panic on deck. Bruce Bochy did green light Hunter Pence last night on a 3 0 pitch. That is a four pitch walk. Giants have the bases loaded with the Weaver producing two of the base runners with a walk, and the other one the throwing air by Molina. They don't have a hit in this inning yet. So Derek Lilliquist, the pitching coach for the Cardinals, is going to come out. All he's going to try and do is bring some calm out to Luke Weaver. And we can remind you that Tuesday, September 27th, is Bay Area Unite Night here at AT&T Park. Your special event ticket will include a Giants Sharks teal cap. And you also get a ticket to see the Giants take on the Rockies. Go to sfgiants.com slash special events. Shark night here. Warriors go to training camp that day. It's the time of the year when all the sports begin to overlap. Looking forward to uh, Randy Hahn. There's Kira. She's a big Sharks fan. We all are. Jamie Baker. Sharks hockey coming back. What a year they had last year. Bases loaded for Joe Panic. He too struck out on a high fastball his first time up. Weaver Mike coming into the start had walked only eight versus 39 strikeouts on the year. He's having a hard time locating the strike zone. Not quite as sharp out of the stretch as he is out of the windup. No, two and oh. This inning, 14 pitches, 10. Have been balls. Two walks and he's gone two and zero oh on panic. Three and zero, oh, not close. That's an easy take, and that's the significance. And being up there with the bases loaded, wanted to get a good pitch to hit, and not even have to worry about a corner pitch getting called on you because it's such a bad ball. He sets up right in the middle of the plate. Barely got the bottom of the strike zone. Three and one. Go <laughs> panic lifts one to right field and well struck. Piscotti getting back. He will call for it and make the catch deep. All the runners will tag. Giants take a one to nothing lead. Bernard Spain scores. Matt Moore to third. Angel Pagan to second. Nice at bat. Nice plate appearance there by Panic. Yeah, it really was. And you can't blame him for being a dis bit disappointed. I mean, that, that ball was hit extremely well. A lot of ballparks, you get more than just a sack fly out of it. But that's what the situation called for. And he worked the count in his favor, got a good pitch to hit, and got the job done. A most productive out. Sometimes in a run and move the runners along, Mike. Yeah, they all get to move up. Sometimes the first run is, is the toughest one to score. 
See how the Cardinals play this. Buster, after a four hit game last night, is up with first base open and Pence on deck. Now, you know, when you have a control pitcher like Weaver, I, I, you know, they trust him to handle the situation. The way you should handle it is stay on the corners. Yardy going back in. Posey got jammed. This may fall. It'll drop. It'll score two more. Moore scores. Pagan scores. Three nothing Giants. Well, and that's what the big guys can do. They've got enough strength to where they don't they don't hit it well. They can still throw it out over the head of a middle infielder. And Dusty Baker used to always say. When you start getting jammed, you know you got a good swing going. And Posey with a four hit last night gets jammed. And winds up knocking in a pair in a two out situation. Been able to fight that pitch that was boring in on his hands. Hunter Pence a check swing foul. That's the Giants' first hit of the inning. Couple of walks, the throwing error by Yadier Molina. Sack fly from Panic, and Posey brings in two. And here's where you want to get greedy. Up the middle, scalding shot right off the bag. Posey to second, and Hunter Pence gets the inning alive for Brandon Bell. Time for our BMW drive of the game, the ultimate driving machine at Bay Area BMW.com. Last night, Hunter Pence got the hanging curveball from Adam Wainwright of the homered. That is just the Giants' sixth home run this year in the first inning. By far the fewest in the majors, the second fewest, the Cardinals, who lead the league at homers, and they have 13. That was just the Giants' sixth first inning homer. Cardinals second least with 13. The most in baseball, the Angels, with 33. Brandon Belt got the Giants first hit with a bloop single in the second. He was erased on the double play ball hit by Crawford. Belt drives this one to left center. Well struck. Tommy Pham won't get there. Posey will score. Here comes Pence around third. There'll be no throw to the plate. It's 5 nothing Giants. Get greedy. Boy, you do it in an opposite field gap. I mean, those are the type of at bats that really lets a player know he's locked in. And Tommy Pham, who's got great range, had none chance to catch up to this thing. And look at the smiles in that dugout. They all felt this coming. It's hard to be patient when you're losing. And they haven't had many big innings like tonight. Another crooked number on this series. Uh, last night they had three two run innings. And tonight, Mike, they really explode. Sokolovich, Miguel Sokolovich, he begins to throw in the Cardinal bullpen. Saw him last night. Well, Luke Weaver might just was going right through the giant lineup four strikeouts to open the game was really impressive and the Giants all over him here in the third inning. He has thrown 25 pitches this inning. And he's behind Crawford 2 and 0 again. There's a home run cut good change up there. Well, one thing about seeing a guy for the first time and striking out, you're at least seeing three pitches. So you are getting a little bit of information to throw in the database, which will allow you to have a, a plan the next time you get up there. And to the Giants' credit, this, this time through the line, their, their plan's working. Well, they're a veteran group, and oftentimes the second time through, when they have a little intel on the pitcher, they will figure out an approach and go get him. This is probably going to be the last hitter. That Weaver faces. If he doesn't get Crawford out, I would expect him to be out of this game. 
Eduardo Nunez waiting on deck. Crawford pulls one past the second baseman Jerko. Belt will try Piscotti's throwing arm. He has a cannon. Molina's tag. He's out at the plate. They're Belt says he's safe. One. What a throw by Stephen Piscotti. He's got a great arm, but this one they may win because Belt may have gotten those big size 15s on the plate before he got the tag. Mm. He's safe. This angle will tell it better, I think. Yeah, he's safe. He is safe. You get the foot down. He's over the top of it. They have enough to overturn that. The Cardinals are heading off the field. Now they're going back on the field. One more look. I mean, right there. He makes contact. Yeah, it looks like he with does. the toe. Nice job of keeping that toe in the dirt to take advantage of. Right there, safe, right? He's safe. Yep. And they just played it back here in the ballpark, and everybody's reacting to it. There was a similar play here Tuesday night. Bill Myers of the Padres threw home, and Buster looked like his foot was there in plenty of time, but his foot was kind of elevated, did not score. But this one, it looks like Belt got those size 15s down to just touch the front of the plate. The Cardinals are starting to walk back. They saw the replay on the big screen. And the players immediately started heading back out. Piscotti was almost in the dugout. Now he's about to the line at first base. Well, if it's overturned, it would be six to nothing, Giants. We're gonna have a verdict here shortly. Safe. Six nothing Giants. Crawford is second. So nice job, Roberto Kelly. I mean, he took on Stephen Piscotti, one of the really strong arms in the National League Central, and it's a very accurate strong arm. And, and you were right, Mike. That's the last batter Luke Weaver's going to face tonight. That's a TKO. Well, he just rounder. exploded. He was so strong the first two innings. He struck out the first four batters, but he implodes here and gives up six. Miguel Sokolovich coming in for the Cardinals. Giants up six nothing and still batting the Giants are here in the third. San Francisco AT&T Park is Mike Matheny. Mike will go back to his bullpen. 
And we saw Miguel Sokolovich in last night's ball game. It'll be the 11th time that he's come in. 13 strikeouts against three walks, just eight base runners in 13 innings. So he's done a nice job for Mike Matheny. He's got a uh, a fastball that's low to mid 90s, big, hard breaking ball and a changeup. Eduardo Nunez opened this bottom of the third by flying out to right. He's the 10th batter of the inning. Giants have drawn a couple of walks the year by Yadier Molina and four consecutive two out hits after the sack fly by Joe Panic. What an inning. Joe Panic with the sack fly. Posey with a two run single. Belt a two run double. Crawford. An RBI single. He's at second base. Advanced on the throw home. I mean, and it has to feel good in the Giants' dugout. I mean, they've, they've got the hit now that that busts an inning open. I mean, that's the one hit that they really have not been able to find much this second half of the season. Trying to get more last night in the night. Belt really drove that ball to left center with his two-run double. Giants scored five runs in being swept here to begin the homestand by San Diego. That's six runs last night. They've already got six runs tonight here in the third inning alone. Three and oh again. Cardinals have already walked two in the inning. A four pitch walk again. We'll keep it alive. And more will move on deck now as Denard Span will be the batter. And it was Spain who started this inning after Nunez flied out to right by drawing a walk. Look out. And Sokolovich looks out of whack. That's five consecutive balls here. He hasn't found the strike zone yet. And the longer it takes for you to find that strike zone, the harder it is to find it. And Span's not the type of hitter's going to help the pitcher out. Very patient. Can't throw a strike. And here's where you got to go to another pitch. Get off the fastball, throw a breaking ball. Anything that you could call as a catcher to get that pitcher in the strike zone just to take that pressure off. Sokolovich, for the most part, has been missing the same spot inside the lefties. Well, he missed the target badly there. Yeah, he set up the way and he missed in. Not close. And that's a changeup, so he did try another pitch. And he missed. He missed in the same spot. Here's, you know, we talked the other day about about where guys position their foot on the rubber. If you're missing in one spot like this, you can move over to the right. If you're in the middle of the rubber, if you're all the way over on the right side, you have no place to go to the right, and you can't make that adjustment. But here's where you can you know, use your rubber to try and get your pitches into the strike zone. Not close. Six He's thrown ball. eight pitches, eight balls. Just a nightmare inning for Mike Matheny. Of the two pitchers he has used, 36 pitches have been thrown. 24 have been balls. And yeah, the other 12 got hit hard. That's the hardest thing for a manager and a pitching coach to watch because you cannot defend against a walk. Bases are reloaded for Matt Moore. This has been a very long bottom of the third. Twenty four minutes the Giants have been hitting here in the bottom of the third so Matt Moore is going to have to refine his rhythm when he goes back to work for the top of the fourth. We've had two replay reviews in this inning. Both won by the Giants. Or actually, the one before was the bottom of the uh, third when they called out Diaz. Jaime Garcia, who was a starting pitcher, was supposed to start here on 
Sunday but he lost his spot in the rotation Alex Reyes will take the start from Mike Matheny begins to loosen in the Cardinal bullpen. The inning at last is over what an inning for the Giants. Joe Panic got it started with a sacrifice fly. And then four straight two out hits. Buster Posey got jammed. He'll bring in two. Then it's Brandon Belt with a two run double. Brandon Crawford will bring in another. The Giants get a half dozen in the inning. And at the end of three, they're all safe. Six nothing Giants. reason Bruce Bochy has won three world championships. He is very in tune with his players and as Greg and Mike mentioned earlier, he is very superstitious. As he said, he canceled batting practice yesterday. He told the guys, hey, report later than normal. Couple of hours. It was to give their bodies a rest, but most importantly to give their minds a rest. Last night they responded Pence with some power posy with a four hit night. And Bochy was hoping the same thing would happen again tonight. They just put up a huge crooked number. Guys, I'm going to just say if this sticks, I don't think we're going to see BP tomorrow either. I don't think so, even though it's a 6.05 first pitch. It is working what they are doing now. Giants with a six run explosion in the bottom of the third. And now Matt Moore, who had to wait through a 26 minute half inning, Mike, will go back to work here as a pitcher in the top of the fourth. And he goes right. At the middle of their batting order, Stephen Piscotti, Jed Jerko, and Yadier Molina. And you know, I think it's easier for a National League pitcher to withstand a long inning time-wise than it is for an American League pitcher, simply because Matt Moore got to hit twice in the inning. So he got up, he was moving around, he was on the bases, he scored. So it's not like he was sitting down getting the ice for 26 minutes. I'm sure he'll take the six-run lead. Down is one ball and two strikes. How many of those runs were earned? Zero. Because of the throwing error by Yadier Molina. It would have been the second out of the inning, and Panic's fly ball would have been the third out of the inning. And how many times has Yadier Molina done that? Made an error to lead to six unearned runs being scored. Not many. Probably never. You have to wonder, Mike, the Cardinals come into the stadium and think this is not a great place for us. Eliminated here in 2014 on the Ishikawa walk off to win the pennant. We eliminated here in 2012. I don't think for a second they don't have those memories. They do. A lot of the same players, although a lot of their guys are hurt. But they are also a team that feels that they can come back from a six run deficit. They build on home runs, they can score quickly. In Matt Moore's mind, it's one to nothing. And he's got to throw his game like it was one nothing. Use all your pitches. Don't get sloppy. Down his full to Steven Piscotti. Moore struck him out. 
to win the first. Cardinals with 207 home runs this year, most in the National League, and they score 46 percent of their runs via the long ball. That's ball four. Didn't want to do that. A leadoff walk with a six-run lead. Moore's first base on balls of the night. Now here's Jed Jerko. Very aggressive, Jed Jerko. Swing a lot of first pitches in this series. It's pretty much how he rolls, though. I mean, he's up there. He's a hack. And Jerko, the former San Diego Padre, came to St. Louis in the John Jay trade. He was done in the winter meetings this past offseason. Well, more after a leadoff walk to Piscotti, will go for a walk after missing with the first two to Jerko. Popped him up. Panic a long run. Pence a long run. Panic will get. No, he dropped it off his glove. He got there and couldn't catch it. The runner, Piscotti, only moves up to second base. Looked like Joe had gotten there, but just couldn't quite catch it. Well, they had him played to pull, so he was over by second base. And this ball, I mean, it's a long way. He had the best angle. There's no way Pence was going to get there. Just overran it. They had a chance to get the force if Pitts could have picked it up cleanly with the bare hand. But in the end, this ball had a mind of its own. So here come the Cardinals. Chris Thomas, our official scorer, rules that a base hit for Jerko. That's a base hit all the way. Yeah, it was not a common effort involved in that where he was positioned. Well, here's Yadier Molina. He wants to atone for his throwing air. And that is a base hit, a seeing eye base hit. Maloney's going to wave in Piscotti. And the throw gets away. No advancement by the runners. The Cardinals are on the board. It's a 6 to 1 game on the RBI single by Yadier Molina. So, Dave Rigetti going to come. Out and have a discussion with us about Matt Moore. Say, all right, listen, you know, you, you had a leadoff walk, then you had a, a blue pit, you had a CNI ground ball, so making good pitches, trust it. Giants baseball on NBC Bay Area is brought to you in part by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Submerge yourself at Monterey Bay Aquarium.org slash love. Share the love. Beautiful night on the shores of McCovey Cove. Greg Papa, Mike Kruko, Amy Gutierrez. No well, Matt Moore had to wait through a 26 minute giant six run third. And he's gone walk. Blue base hit. Opposite field hit here in the fourth. Well face Johnny Peralta who blooped a single to center his first time up and he's the one guy that has seen more in the Cardinal lineup tonight going back to his American League days. He's three for six. Against Matt Moore with a double. All one. Mets won their game tonight behind Bartolo Colon. Seven innings scoreless, a three hitter through the seven. And back to back home runs from Jose Reyes and Asdrubal Cabrera. Yoannis Cespedes also brought in the third run. So the Mets have pulled within a half game of the Giants. Giants, the number one wild card team at 78 and 68. The Mets are now 78 and 69. Yeah, he opened up this at bat with a changeup, then he missed badly on a fastball and a 1 0 count. 
be interesting to see what Buster Posey calls here. Peralta's a dangerous hitter. Came inside, Mike had missed, and now it's 3 0 to Peralta. And yeah, it looked like a cut fastball. So Posey mixing it up, trying to find a pitch that will enable Matt Moore to get in the strike zone. Takes a strike. Oh, my God. For that ground ball, it gets two outs. Trying to minimize the damage. Moore's had to work with runners on base in every inning, and he's working really slowly. They're all to the center. Bernard Spain hardly has to move or put it away. And it's a big first out of the inning for Matt Moore. Yeah, that's a nice comeback down to count 3 0. Big out. One thing the Cardinals can do, they can keep throwing guys at you that can hit the ball in the ballpark. That's just what they can do. And they don't even have Matt Holliday. I mean, he's, he's not even in the lineup. I mean, he's another guy with a big. Home run bat. It's amazing how they've hung around with all their injuries. That's kind of how baseball has evolved. It's no longer the best 25 guys, it's the best 40. You've got to have some depth in your organization if you're going to have a good year because injuries are going to happen to your club. It's just part of the game. And it's one thing the Cardinals have had for many years, Mike, is organizational depth. They're a great organization. They always have been. They're deep. There's Randall Gritchick. Big swing and a miss for a strike. And it really has been their strength over the years. I mean, they won the World Series in 2011, Tony LaRusso's final year, Albert Pujols' final year. And then Matheny takes over in 2012. They've made the playoffs each and every year. Mike's been the manager, first four years. First skipper in baseball history to make the playoffs each of his first four years. Good baseball man. Everybody felt that someday he was going to be a manager. Can't be around that guy for five minutes and you know he's a leader. Good guy. When the broadcast for a bit, the front office, and then uh, the manager strike three called. Richick just froze on that 0 2 fastball. Outside paint cutting back to the outside corner. Mr. Posey watched the frame job. Bang. And I'm not sure if that glove was behind the strike zone at the onset. He just sort of brought it back in and Laz Diaz went right with it. Backwards K. Took strike three looking. Moore's third strike out of the game. He'll face Tommy Fan. Good curveball. Curveball's been a good pitch for him this inning. Jericho at second. Yadier Molina at first. Brandon Moss has moved into the on deck circle. Left handed power hitter. Big swing and a miss there by Fan. Right above the hands at 94. If you can keep climbing, go right back that side of the plate. Same pitch, or you can cut him. One more strike to get out of this inning, which is the one run scoring. Just missed in. Good pitch, though. Sixty two pitches trying to get through four. That's a good rate. A little over fifteen per. It's a little over. We should do a couple pitches. Wow. 
This has been the longest inning. We're 23 here. As he sets up a wing. Missed in. Now they set that target away. They kind of wanted that to be off the plate at the knees away from him. As it is, it kind of cut across the plate. And because of the way that ball cut, you may see Pozo go back in on the hands with the fastball here. Fastball in or fastball away? Yeah. Nice breaking ball there to strike out Tommy Pham. Cardinals do get a run. It'll be Angel Pagan, Joe Panic, and Buster Posey. Top of the order due up in the fourth. 6 1 Giants. PG&E, PG&E's home energy checkup shows customers new ways to save energy and money based on their energy habits. Learn more at pge.com slash checkup. That's PG&E together building a better California. Greg Papa, Mike Fruco, Amy Gutierrez, at t Park. Six in the bottom of the third. And the Cardinals will bring in a new pitcher, Mike. We know him, the uh, left-handed starter. Jaime Garcia who will now work out of the bullpen. Well it, it really kind of a surprise because he's really impressed the Giants over the years with how he's done against them and when you're going to take your bats against him it's a low 90s fastball with sink. He's a left handed sinker ball who throws lots of ground ball. He's got two types of breaking ball a curveball slider and a good change up. He's allowed 23 home runs on the years last outing. And Monday he got shelled. New left fielder for the St. Louis Cardinals, Jose Martinez, comes in to replace Tommy Pham. So Garcia was initially scheduled to start on Sunday, but Mike Matheny said before the series started last night he would not start. And the, the big right-hander Alex Reyes will go on Monday. Mike Leak tomorrow for the Cardinals and Reyes, boy, he is big and strong and throws hard. It doesn't quite get the attention of a hitter like it used to. Because there's so many of them now that do it. Another like guy throws 98. They don't even sneeze at 90. They're not even impressed unless it has location, a little movement to it. It's amazing how many hard throwers. There are in baseball. Really is. 
I was reading the other day the, the average fastball this year, Mike, is like 92 and a half miles per hour. I think it's 92.9. It's almost 93. Well, this, when you were pitching, what was it? It was 80, 89. 80s? 89. Yeah. That was the average. Well, four miles per hour. That's a lot. They can't throw a strike, these Cardinals pitchers. Well, if you need help with a consumer problem, contact NBC Bay Area Response. In just a few months, consumer investigator Chris Kamura has recovered more than $150,000 for people like you. Call 1-888-996-TIPS or visit NBCBayArea.com slash response, where every call, every email is answered. NBC Bay Area, we investigate. Joe Panic. Struck out his first time up against Luke Weaver. Second time up, just a great sacrifice fly. Able to score the Giants' first run and move all the runners up. There's a strike. And Matt Carpenter visiting with Angel Pagan over at first base. Is a Joe Panic fan? Nice backpack. One ball, one strike. It's a great time of year for the Joe Panic backpack. School starts up. Hey, he's rocking it. Dodgers are leading Mike by a score of three to one in Arizona behind uh, Kenta Maeda beating Zach Greinke again. Dodgers got two against Greinke in the first. Justin Turner with a triple scored. Chase Utley scored on a pass ball by Wellington Castillo. So with the Giants winning it last night. Dodgers losing in Arizona. Giants have it down to four. Mets won their game three nothing tonight. Bartolo Colon, seven innings, three hits, no runs. Homers from Reyes and uh, as Drupal Cabrera. Giant lead over the Mets down to a half game. Mets are getting good medical news. Lucas Duda has been activated. Their first baseman has been out most of the year, and also Jacob Degrom. Is coming back and he's scheduled to start on Sunday for the Mets against the Twins. Panic pops it up. Matt Carpenter. And he does not catch it. They're going to have a force at second base. Pagan had nowhere to go. That looked dicey like Carpenter was not going to quite figure out the spin of that ball. Well, there's wind up there above the ballpark. And as we've learned over the years, when pop ups go up on the right side of the field, They'll work their way back towards the field. And if you're standing underneath it as a first baseman, it's going to come back from the line back towards the field. Here comes the drift, and it just becomes a very difficult play. I mean, it's not quite as bad as Candlestick, but yet still some personality in every pop up. It's Kipe's pop up dance. The, that was the pop up dance. <laughs> there. Full bore right there. So God's like, what do I do? Buster Posey. Drives one deep to left center field and gone. The home run drop is over. His first home run in exactly two months. Boy, that felt good. Yeah, it did. I mean, he had one off the wall last night in his four hit night here, no doubt about it. He takes on the deep part of left center. <laughs> and uh, you think he's having fun? And they gave him the silent tree. Like his first major league <laughs> homer. It's been so long. 184 at bats. He homered against Kevin Quackenbush. Second game back after the All Star game on July 16th. It is September the 16th. You know, it's not often you see an MVP get the silent treatment, but. When you go two months without hitting one, you kind of expect it. Well, oh, he crushed this one, Mike. 
Well, middle in right at the belt, stays inside it. And using his lower body, that's the thing that's really come to life here, is balance in his lower body. And he just drove that thing out of here. Yeah. First one in the wild. <laughs> yeah, that's good. I like that. You are kind of a yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter Pence, by the way, struck out. Yeah, there's Buckley. a silent tree, but no reaction. <laughs> You're well, Clark. It may have been his idea. <laughs> so many things to like about tonight and last night. Where do you start? How about Buster Posey? Four hits last night. After coming into last night, 11 for 57. Two more hits tonight. Four RBIs. And his first home run in two months. He is coming out of it in a big way. <laughs> Just in time. Yep. And uh, great time to get hot. And here you go. The Cardinals were not over shifting on belt Mike. Now the count gets to 0 and 2 and they shift the infield. To his pull side with two strikes. Interesting. Huh? Well, you know, I, I think when they shift to two strikes, it's because a guy in two strikes is hitting the ball to the pole side of the field. Well, what are you seeing a lot of in a two strike count? Off speed stuff, breaking balls. So mm. I think that's what that shift is reacting to. I don't know if I agree with it, but that's why they do it. Belt strikes out. But this inning, a memorable one for Buster Posey. First home run in two months. A two run shot. Yeah, I can do that again. 8 1 Giants. Your haircut ends with a refreshing hot towel finish, so you leave feeling clean, sharp, and ready to go. Save time, check in online with the mobile app or at supercuts.com. Trying to get the MVP when you go to Supercuts. Get the neck massage after. Matt Moore goes to work, Mike. This I'm is all about the neck massage. That's got, a, they got, a, you got to get the MVP when you go there. Is that what's called? Yes, the MVP. <laughs> You feel like an MVP when you leave. Jose Martinez, first at bat of the game, came in in the double switch. Second generation major leaguer, son of former major league outfielder Carlos Martinez. Moore's 1-1 pitch taken up the middle right to Joe Panic. 
jam sandwich. Beautiful. One out. Game two of this four game weekend series back with you tomorrow night we will be on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area Giants pregame live will start at 530 Jeff Samarja for the Giants former Giant Mike Leak will go for the birds the Cardinals and then on uh, Sunday Albert Suarez against Alex Reyes a 105 first pitch Giants pregame live on Sunday at 1230. Batting glove, so he's got a blow on the hands. And Matt Moore facing the Cardinal lineup for a third time now. Carpenter single to open the game, and he bounced out to second, and now he's two for three with an off field base hit. He can hit. Great bat control. Cold hands and all. Billy Miller, Miller at first base, coaching. Assistant, assistant hitting coach for the Cardinals. He was a great giant. Good guy. He could hit. Yes, he could. The lead Miss Diaz. Giants on their staff. Being the skipper. Look out in the giant dugout. Now Billy Miller, I mean, he could, he's done a lot in baseball. I mean, as a player, he went right into the front office with the Dodgers. And uh, wanted to get back on the field. Had a chance to come back to the Midwest where he's from. He's from Missouri. Around the St. Louis area. Ball hits sharply. Bernard Spann gets back, puts it away. For one thing, though, watching that swing, that's a good hack. Our first chance to see a lead Miss Diaz. To see why he was picked on the National League All-Star team this year. Although we were not altogether that excited about it when it happened, because when he got picked, Brandon Crawford did not get picked. But he can play. Steven on the chest. Yep. Classic logo. It really is. They had the best record in baseball last year. Won 100 games. They won the National League Central coming into this year. Three straight years. Of course, the Cubs, with the Giants winning last night, locked up their first National League Central title since 08. Going to clinch on September the 15th with two and a half weeks to go in the year. That's yeah. an early clinch. They've had a great year. They won again today. And Wrigley beat the Brewers. Just missed. Two and one. Straight away defensively. Scotty's very good opposite field hitter. Pushed him back. And more 77 pitches now as he works here in the top of the fifth. Giants have a rested bullpen after Quato's complete game last night. Strike. That's how you take away count leverage in a 3 1 count with great location. And that was knee high pain in the outside corner. And Carpenter will be running. 
This is taken the other way and a base hit. Carpenter will go to third. Everybody's approached from right field, right on cue. And he's got home run power the other way. And he keeps the inning alive for Jed Jerko. Carpenter at third, Piscotti at first. Jerko is one for two tonight. Fly out to center. He hit that towering pop up that uh, Panic raced over into shallow right. Could not quite make the play on it. Glanced off his glove for a base hit. Right with the cutter, first pitch. And I think that's a good pitch for a guy who's got such aggressiveness on the first pitch as Jerko does. This doesn't mean you can't throw a fastball, just don't throw it in an area where he can hurt you. Let him swing at something off the plate. Must be one of the high fastball and more missed. 2 0. Pretty impressive, Mike. Matt Moore had never thrown that cutter before. Just was shown the grip by Madison Bumgarner, encouraged to throw it by Buster Posey, and it's a big part of his repertoire now. It really has been. I mean, he threw it 15 times the very first game he ever took it into. You know, and really, if you're going to learn a new pitch, you should have a pretty good feel of it right away. It's not uncommon for a guy to be sitting there on the bench during a game, talk to a pitcher, have him show you a pitch. Take it out there, play catch with it, and use it in his next start. And that really was the case. Madison Bumgarner showed him how he gripped the his cutter. And Matt Moore took it into in the very first game he ever used it. He was one out away from a no hitter against the Dodgers in LA. And he threw it a lot that night. 3 1 pitch. Ball four. Bases are loaded for Yadier Molina. So much supposedly going to come out of it. All this is right here is to give him a breather. Had and to work some, out a, a lot in last inning. He had a, a, a pitch count that was in the mid 20s, and here he's going deep in the pitch count again. So, not a bad time to give your starting pitcher a bit of a breather. And. It allows your bullpen to get going. First time all series. George Contos is going down. With Eli Whiteside to warm up. Josh Osich also going down. Righty and a lefty. It's eight to one. Cardinals with their home run power can get back into the game rapidly. Yadier Molina hit a grand slam for the Cardinals on Sunday. One for two tonight. Top to second opposite field base hit to bring in their only run so far. Looked like Molina had a little something in his eye. Must have posed he was going to take a little walk, give him some time. He said, I'm okay. Buster sets up away. Now jumps in. Buster's so good at that. My Carpenter at third, Piscotti at second, Jerko at first. The other sets up very late to not tip location or hurl. He'll give you a false step, set up away, come in. Well, he's a better catcher. I mean, he knows how easy it is to relay location. And if you set that target up too early, it allows that runner at second to let the hitter know which side of the plate that, that pitch is intended. And a long inning for Matt Moore. Three and oh. He had a problem his first couple of starts as a giant, Mike, where he was just kind of nibbling. He was missing just a little bit. And now he's having a hard time getting in the strike zone. Right. Well, 
I also think the very first two starts he had, he had really tiny strike zones to work with. The plate umpire? Yes. Yeah. In and Miami and Philly, yeah. And then after that, I mean, then he did have some mechanical problems. And really, it, it got really bad where one outing, the outing before he had the, the near no hitter in Los Angeles, the only pitch he had working was a fastball. He walks Molina with the bases lo loaded to bring in a run. Carpenter scores. And the giant lead is down to eight to two. And here comes Bruce Bochy. Well, he's jogging out here, so. He's not coming out of the game. But I think Bruce Bochy is going to tell him. You all right? Yeah, I'm OK. All right, you got one more hitter. And you have to qualify for a win. You got to go five innings. And that's what Bruce Bochy's telling. You got one more guy. That guy's Johnny Peralta. Now, Bochy may give him a second guy, but I mean, you know, he's, he just gave him his little mini motivational speech right there. It's September. It's eight to one. Don't walk a guy. Exactly. And you know, if if you hurt his feelings, so what? I mean, from Bochi's perspective, he didn't care about that right now. It's all about the win. He's seen that this Giants team have an eight to two lead and not win. It happened when Baltimore was in town, and he did not forget that. And there's just too much power on this Cardinals team. And, and if he starts to sense that Matt Moore is losing it, he's going to go to the pin. Johnny Peralta. All one. Well, that was a bit of a squeeze right there. That could have been called a strike. I think Moore was disappointed he didn't get it. Strike. Change up. Gets him in the strike zone. And it looked the way that Peralta took that, that he was in the take mode, which I find hard to believe in a 1 0 count with leverage. You know, Moore has walked the last two batters. Bases loaded. Piscotti at third, Jerko at second, Molina at first. Two outs. Way inside. This may be Moore's last batter either way, Mike. Even yeah. if he gets him out, I think You're he, right. he's going to be done this inning. There's he's too leaking. many pitches. He's leaking oil. Long innings back to back this time of year. They're tough on a pitcher. He's had runner, at least one runner on base every inning. He's at a very deliberate pace with runners on. And they've been on all night. Buster away. 2 1 pitch. Popped up. Denard Spann calls off Hunter Pence and puts it away. So Matt Moore gets through that inning. Just one run scores. We're halfway through it tonight. 8 2 Giants.
hit your next remodel out of the park with slabs, tile, decorative stones, and more from the Bay Area's premier showroom, Da Vinci Marble. Go to DaVinciMarble.com. Giants with a six-run bottom of the third, knocking Luke Weaver out of the game. Buster Posey talking pitching mechanics with Matt Moore is likely done after a 21-pitch fourth inning followed by a 28-pitch fifth. Gotta love this, Mike. Well, it's important as a catcher to understand the mechanics of your of your pitcher. And uh, you know, Matt Moore at times can be a little too quick out of the stretch where he can leave that front side without being completely gathered. And when it happens he loses a feel of the strike zone. And sometimes the guy who's throwing the pitch is the last guy to know what the pitch is doing the catcher knows. I make our see it a Brandon Crawford to start the bottom of the fifth. Dave Rigetti hanging out there listening to Posey and more. Just being around Buster, Rags, Mark Gardner. Matt Moore is going to lock in here and be a heck of a starter for the Giants for a long time. Oh, you're right. And, and, you know, there's a lot of guys in that clubhouse that can, that can help him get better. Remember, he's only 27 years old. And you got Matt Cain, you got Jake Peavy, Johnny Cueto. I mean, you, you've got, you know, Madison Bumgarner has already helped him with the cutter. And you mentioned Dave Rigetti and Mark Gardner. I mean, it, just absolutely fantastic. They will make you better if you're a pitcher. You come here, they will make you better. Matt Moore has been inflicted by the cardinal disease. None of their pitchers can throw a strike. That's a four-pitch walk by Jaime Garcia. Matt Moore probably done with 93 pitches thrown. Three walks and four strikeouts. Eduardo Nunez. Fly out to right drew a walk. He was on the change up. I think that's the hardest pitch to look for. More activity in the Cardinal bullpen. Cardinals have walked six tonight. Mike. Yeah, that's unlike them. Had the eight runs on just six hits. They have Dean Kieke for the left-hander down in the Cardinals bullpen with an extreme red alert. He is heating up quick. Jaime Garcia has to reacclimate to a roll out of the bullpen. He's been a starter for so long. Uh, he's out of whack. Mechanically, I mean, he's searching. Bad swing there by Eduardo Nunez. He strikes out, one away. Here's Denard Spain, who was twice walked tonight in two plate appearances. Last night he had a couple of hits, intentionally walked ahead of Cueto sack fly. George Contos will be the uh, giant pitcher in the top of the sixth. It's a fair ball, old foul at the end. Mac Williamson has moved on deck. The pitcher spot is due up next. Interesting since they've recalled Mac. He's not gotten a start. Just used exclusively as a pinch hitter. Now he's ready to go. It's just that there's not been that much opportunity for him. It's time of the year you're going to go with your veterans. And when 
Mac Williams, who went on the disabled list for a long time, he kind of lost his edge. When the Giants did rest in Art Span the other night, it was Gorky Hernandez who made the start. Unless you like Gorky's in center, if you're not going to play Span. He can play some center field. He's a good outfielder with a great throwing arm, Gorky's. Giants got some more defense back uh, when Gregor Blanco was activated today. And Aaron Span swinging a miss, strikes out, two away. And the Giants reinstated Gregor Blanco from the 15 day disabled list. Right shoulder impingement. I'm not sure he's quite able to swing a bat, Mike, but coach was saying before the game, he can do other things to help us win defensively and pinch running. So they just wanted them on the roster as a body. Mac Williamson with two outs. Crawford over at first base. Eight to two Giants batting in the bottom of the fifth. Mets won their game. Giants need to win to stay a game up on the Mets. Dodgers have been leading all night in Arizona by a score of three to one. Got two against Grinky in the first. Good change up. A better outing tonight by Zach Grinke against his former team in Labor Day. He got blasted, gave up five home runs to the Dodgers. Can't say that I saw that coming. Tonight Grinke went six innings, gave up three runs, just one earned. If Williamson strikes out, Garcia strikes out the side. Contos will pitch the sixth. Eight two Giants. By Toyota. Wouldn't it be nice to drive California's most trusted cars? Visit your local Toyota dealer for great deals today. Toyota, let's go places. I think we'll stay right here for the weekend. Game two of a four game set tomorrow night, 6.05, first pitch. Samarja against the former giant Mike Leak, Sunday at 1 o'clock. Albert Suarez against Alex Reyes. Giants go to the bullpen, Mike, and it's George Cantos who will pitch the sixth. 54th game that he has come into solid season ERA at 2.50 33 strikeouts against 19 walks. Low 90s fastball slider. Two and four seem to fastball as well. He also has a changeup and a curve by hill feature. George when he was at the Yankees coming up to the minor league ranks I mean, he was a starter so he's got the four pitches that you see as a starter. When he got to 
the bullpen and got to the big leagues, you kind of became a two pitch guy. Grichik grounds one. Nunez cuts in front of Crawford and sidearms Grichik out. One away. Well, that's the deal. If you're a third baseman, you get everything you can get to going to your left. Even if it means cutting off a gold glove shortstop. Both converging. Crawford clears out. And both guys have cannons for arms, so. Grichik really never had a chance. They had that surrounded. They had a glove in front of it, a glove behind it. That was not going to get on base. Jeremy Hazel Baker will be the pinch hitter. He's the guy who broke up Kyle Hendricks' home run, or uh, no hit bid with a home run. His 12th of the year. Nice night on uh, Smokey. Yeah, they got it going out there. Pretty calm out there tonight, huh? No breeze. Curveball misses. Hazel Baker with 12 home runs. He's got speed and he's got power. Santos misses up, two and one. Former fourth round pick by the uh, Red Sox. Yes, he was. Five years in their chain, went to the Dodgers for a year plus. Then he signed with the Cardinals as a minor league free agent in May of 2015. 2 1 pitch. It is an asset when you've got speed and you've got power. It separates you from the herd. Usually it's one way or the other. In the six minor league seasons, he averaged 38 stolen bases at two years where he stole 45 or more. Jeremy Hazel Baker. It off to stay at three and two. And Conto's doing what you should do with a six run lead. Go right at him. Put the pressure on the hitter. Hey, look who got the ball. Oh, yeah. High five, high five, high five, high five, high five, high five low five. Genie caught it. Hugs and kisses. <laughs> That's a foul ball. Almost went right on the plate. And as Diaz goes down to stop home plate down. Three two pitch. Struck him out. Good hard slider. Two way. Well, Giants fans, next time you want to grab giant seats, get the StubHub app. Not only will you find seats you'll love whenever you want, you can find the best seat for your buck when you start sorting by best value. So get the StubHub app today. StubHub. Oh yeah. A couple Mr. of Vulcans. Spock is here. This is Spock. Yeah. Captain Kirk. <laughs> I had pajamas like that. Uh, I bet you did. Star Trek night tonight. 50th anniversary. Really? How about that? Captain Kirk, Mr. Spock, Bill Shatner, Leonard Nimoy. Sure was ahead of its time.
That toss up 0-2 to Jose Martinez, who bounced out to second as one previous time up tonight against Matt Moore. Matt Moore went five innings, seven hits, couple of runs, both earned, walked three, and struck out four. Hey, there's the dude. The dude? All right, let's check him out. All right, dude, do your thing. All right, I got this one. Oh, yeah. Still got a little bend in his knee. Why? Because he's the dude. Rick LaRoe is the dude. Crawford. That is a 1 2 3. Sixth inning for George Cantos in relief of Matt Moore. Top of the order due up 8 2 as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Giants broadcast well as you all know Johnny Cueto recorded his fifth complete game of the season last night and the Cardinals were stymied by his shimmy they admitted it Stephen Piscotti the Cardinals right fielder said Cueto is doing what he does best he was able to throw off our rhythm with crazy leg kicks and quick pitching he's got it down to a science that he does gentlemen for well, the Cardinals Amy have a lot of Hitters who use uh, leg lifts as we see the former Dodger, the Bull, Jonathan Broxton, in to pitch the sixth inning. See his number still throwing hard. You see mid to high 90s with the velocity on the fastball. He will two and four seam it. He's got a hard slider to change up. Yadier Molina is out of the game. Carson Kelly, who made his major league debut Sunday when he caught Luke Weaver. Is in so Yadier is going to take the rest of the game off. I've been uh, anxious to watch this kid catch Carson Kelly in the minor leagues. If, if you're designated the best catcher in the minor leagues, you win a Gold Glove, and he won that award. Out of Oregon. One-one pitch to Pagan. Taken down the left field line. Martinez will come over and make a tremendous catch in foul ground. What a play. The only way he makes that play is because of where they set him prior to the pitch defensively. They played him on the line. And watch the closing speed here. Mm. Slides into it. Nice play. Gets those big long legs moving. He can cover some ground. Nice slide. It looked like fun, didn't it? Mm -hmm. A little slip and slide out there. Yeah. Joe Panic. Comebacker, right to Broxton. And the man Carpenter quickly two outs. This is a great tip for uh, kids. If you are a pitcher and you get a comebacker, 
You do exactly what Jonathan Broxton does. This is being taught around Major League Baseball, all of professional baseball, really. Instead of making a throw after you catch it, and a lot easier throw is to run towards the base and underhand. It's a, a much more controlled throw. You don't have to worry about a wild pitch. And it seems like pitchers might just have a hard time throwing from flat ground. They're just not grooved for it. I and mean, you'll see a lot of pitchers just make throwing airs to bases. Roxton working to Buster Posey. Last time up, the drought is over. Exactly two months to the day, he hits a home run. Well, he got an inside fastball from Jaime Garcia. Stayed inside it, and that ball had no chance. Smothered it. I think he's coming out of his long slump. Well, Four hits last night, a couple more tonight, including his first home run in exactly two months. Back these last couple of months, you look at how many times he's lost his lower body in a swing, and how many times he's had reach, and he hasn't been able to use his legs with power. There's a base hit, four hit night last night, a three hit night tonight, and all of a sudden, mechanically, he gets corrected and he becomes a hitter who is in one piece again, and he wasn't. He was in two pieces: his upper body and his lower body. Now he's back in sync. Even when he he comes out now and he's reaching a little bit, he's still in position with the lower body, and that's yeah. something he was not doing for a good part of the two months that he was in the the power slump. Foot down. Such a key. Get that front foot down. You hear it every day in the clubhouse. Hunter Pence. It'll end the inning. Diaz will take it himself. Buster picks up his third hit of the game. We are going to the seventh Giants up eight to two. Bay Area is brought to you by the Monterey Bay Aquarium. Submerge yourself at MontereyBayAquarium.org slash love. Share the love and nothing but love. The last two nights for the Giants. Orange Friday, 6-2 win last night. All Giants tonight, a six-run third. And they lead by a score of 8-2 to two as Bruce Bochy will go back to his bullpen. Matt Moore went five. George Contos a one, two, three. Sixth inning, and now it's on to left hander Josh Osich, who will make his 55th appearance of the year. One and three with a 4 3 2. Nasty on lefties. See the number of games he's been in this year. This will be number 55, and he spent some time on the DL. And Carpenter. 
has been pulled back. He's not going to bat here. The uh, Cardinal leadoff hitter as they send up Greg Garcia. So Garcia coming to the game last night on the double switch. So Mike Matheny looking ahead to tomorrow night. Mike is taking the stars off the field. Yadier Molina leaving early and Matt Carpenter. Well, and it becomes a maintenance game in that regard. But you know, this is the time of year where if you know your everyday players, your leaders, you get a chance to rest their legs, you take advantage of it. Well, if they don't come back tonight and you never know we've seen Giants blow a lot of leads for eight to two they're really going to have to. Uh, try to get both of the next two games. I think the goal you'd love to sweep this series but the goal for the Giants was to get three out of four. Win this series win the season series in case of a tiebreaker. And push them three back. Uh, and I think it even got simpler than that I mean I. It, it's just a matter of you know control the swing you're about to take control the control the pitch you're about to throw. And. That's a strike. The philosophy that Bruce Bochy has is to keep the line moving philosophy. I mean look he loves home runs like any other manager but he likes. Walks hits. Keep the line moving. And it's something the Giants have really not been consistent at finding that rhythm to do that. And that's their key. If they can put together rhythm through their offense, then they feel that they can they can compete and they can have a chance to win every day. Starting pitching has been very solid. You should point out that the bullpen has had some, some speed bumps in the road, but they're still a confident bunch. 3 2. No such leadoff walk here. Well the NFL is back with NBC's Sunday night football and NBC Barrier improved its over the air signal so you can watch using an antenna. So don't miss the action on channel 11 by rescanning your TV. Just go to NBCBayArea.com slash rescan to find out how to do it. One and done for Josh Osich. Bruce Bochy will go to the bullpen and bring in the right hander Corey Guerin with the Cardinals batting here in the top of the seventh and the Giants up eight to two. Of Mike Kruko, Amy Gutierrez, NBC Bay Area, and the Giants Television Network, Corey Guerin in the face, and Ledmus Diaz. 53rd time that he has come in. Bruce Bochy looking for a ground ball to get two outs. It's that simple. Ball is lifted high to left center field. Angel Pagan comes over. He's under it. One away. One pitch, one out for Guerin. Sweet. That's the way they like to come out of the bullpen. You know, that's the last thing they tell you too when you come out of the bullpen. Make something happen. Get after him. Throw some strikes, especially on that first pitch. Still looking for that double play ball as he tells the middle infielders to be ready. Here's Steven Piscotti. One for two with a walk. Score to run.
There's a strike. Scotty was not looking for a front door breaking ball. He's got a good approach to beat Sink. I mean, he's an inside out guy. Talk about how he hits a lot of balls in right field with drive. Just a good all around player. Good outfielder, good throwing arm. Born in Pleasanton, went to Amador Valley High School, and I think you know he went to Stanford. One ball, two strikes to Piscotti. Here, keeping that ball down. That's where the ground balls are. He's gotten a haircut since he last worked, huh? Yeah, that's a good look. The beard up. He's much more manicured, quaffed. Change it up. Why not? Break the ball away. Piscotti extending and defending. Scotty was a first round draft pick by the Cardinals out of Stanford in June of 2012. A supplemental first round pick, 36th overall, so a high pick. <laughs> Dodgers continue to lead in Arizona 3 to 1, with the Diamondbacks now batting in the bottom of the eighth against Joe Blanton. By eight out of the game. Good Just pitch. missed. Good take. Two and two, Mike. Mark Gardner summoning somebody. Looks like we're going to get some more activity in the pen. Eli Whiteside will warm up another relief pitcher. Well, he had him lunging there and strikes out to Scotty. Nice work by Garen. Two outs. So you just lower the breaking ball. It starts out right on the outside corner, and by the time Biscotti gets out there to defend, it's gone. And Reynolds, the left-hander, would be next in line. Batter is Jed Jerko. Jerko, his fourth plate appearance of the night, flied out to center, hit that high pop up that Panic had to race from his spot out to Shallow Ruddy, glanced off his glove for a base hit and also drew a walk. Hitting cleanup tonight in the Cardinal lineup. Trying to get him to bite, 2 0. So a good count to hit in for Jerko. He's got the caveman approach, man. He's a hack. Mm, yanked another one, three and zero. Those are easy takes. There's Carson Kelly, the young catcher, Mike. You wanted to see. Well. Into that bat if this inning prolongs. Three zero pitch. Jerko taking all the way. Well, it's not a bad thing when you're down six runs. And a lot of times before you even walk out of the dugout, you're told that by your manager, take a strike. Trevor Rosenthal. 
Former Cardinal closer looking to come back off the DL. Up in the bullpen, Jerko in the hole. Crawford back in, goes to second. And they get the force out there on Garcia. And Garen gets out of the inning. We go to the bottom of the seventh. We'll stretch at 18 T8. special night here at AT&T Park. It was Olympic night. It's an annual event and the Giants welcome in past Olympians and 2016 participants. You're looking at the women's water polo team gold medalist and then there's another gold medalist coming here with Kevin Durant. Yep we showed him earlier but he's so awesome. We're going to show him again. He won with the U.S. men's basketball team and we're hoping he's going to help the Warriors to another title. Albert Suarez the lucky one there getting the signed ball. Craig Mike. So great to see Kevin Durant throw out the first pitch and throw a strike. Trevor Rosenthal off the disabled list for the Cardinals will appear their former closer hard thrower against Brandon Belt. Kevin Durant had in the uh, clubhouse before the game Mike and he was uh, visiting with Willie Mays for a good half hour. Well the new pitcher now for St. Louis will be the former closer Trevor Rosenthal he had an injury this year. Spent some time on the DL and he can still run it up there mid to high 90s more highs than mids. He's also got a very good curveball from the high three quarter release and he'll throw a change up. Chet Jerko goes over to first Greg Garcia to second Matt Carpenter's out of the game. Brandon Belt with a big hit tonight. Double in the gap in left center the other way with two outs. Drive in two more runs in that giant six run third. That was a big one, Mike. Posey fought the one off to loop it in to make it three nothing. But when Belt shot one in the gap to bring in two more to stretch it out to five nothing, it was on. Very therapeutic. That's a good word for these last two games. Well, I mean, strikes out. They've been grinding so hard and getting nothing for it. I mean, just you know, frustrating game after frustrating game. So to have an inning where they just let it all out, put a six spot up early in the game. I mean, that's huge for this team as they look for that that rhythm within their office to click. It's the time they have to do it. They have to do it. They know it. And they're doing it. It's Brandon Crawford. I go back to that conversation you and I had with Dwayne Kuyper on Giants post game live after the loss to San Diego on Wednesday gets swept. How just the Cardinals coming in and just seeing red in the great rivalry and a team you really got to beat here to secure one of those last two playoff spots. Well, we've always said good for him, and it's been. It, it has been fantastic for him, and we've always said that it's, it's great to have a rival like the Dodgers because they can get you out of a funk, no matter what your record is. I mean, when you play them, 
you elevate. And it's the same thing with the Cardinals. Robbery not quite as intense as the Dodgers, but it's intense. And it's felt in both dugouts. Both teams elevate for each other, and it's just a, it's just a great relationship, and it has been for over a century. Madison Bumgarner will not pitch against the Cardinals on this series, but he's going to go Monday night against Clayton Kershaw at Dodger Stadium. And he's thinking about it too. He's starting to pitch that game in his mind as he talks to Dave Gresham, Giants head trainer. By the way, Arizona is threatening in the bottom of the eighth against Joe Blanton. Gene Segura is up with the bases loaded. Dodgers up three to one. Kenley Jansen is now loosening in the Dodger bullpen. They may need him to get a four out save tonight. Crawford rifles it back to stay at three and two. Segura just grounded out, and the threat fizzles out for the Diamondbacks. They'll go to the ninth now with the Dodgers up three to one. Pardon me, that was Ricky Weeks Jr., I think, who uh, rounded out not Gene Segura, a right handed hitter. Hey, you made it out. Killed the The inning. base is loaded. Strikes out it's and a 98 mile an hour fastball from Rosenthal. Good fastball and great location. He can throw hard, that guy. Well, the most popular way to follow the Giants postseason push is with the MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Get MLB.com at bat and get it for your favorite devices right now. And some Cardinal fans here tonight. Great rivalry. They have won five of the last six National League pennants. Cardinals. Giants. Mets won last year and five years before. Nunez grounds out to Diaz. One, two, three for Trevor Rosenthal. We go to the eighth. And uh, Santiago Casillas is in.
on CSN Bay Area. Join us at 5.30 for Giants pregame live. First pitch at 6.05. Jeff Samarja against the former Giant Mike Leake. We're back with you next on NBC Bay Area and the Giants Television Network a week from tomorrow night, next Saturday at 5.30 for the Giants and the Padres from Petco Park. And that'll be our last broadcast of the year on NBC Bay Area. Here's Santiago Casilla, the former closer, who has not worked a game since he blew the save in Arizona a week ago tonight when he gave up the home run to Jake Lamb again. No panic on that towering pop up. We'll get the first out here for Casilla in the eighth inning. Well, and, and he needs some work right now. He needs an inning. It's in a solid season. And he's going to get more opportunities to save. I mean, Right now, he's had a chance to separate, clear his head. I mean, he's got great stuff, and you can see it: 61 strikeouts and 54 and two thirds. Here's Johnny Peralta after Carson Kelly, the catcher, popped out to panic. Johnny Peralta one for three tonight. Think about Casilla. I mean, he can give you a lot of different types of movement at high velocity. Two types of fastball, two seam fastballs, four seam fastballs, cut the ball, curve ball, change up. When he ran into some problems was when he was trying to throw a curveball in Ballparks that didn't have a lot of humidity. Coors Field, Chase Field in Arizona. Get it back here in this environment here at ATT, that curveball gets nasty. And it really has been his best weapon here the last three months. And we're talking about killing both righties and lefties. He had a rough road trip, lone save in Chicago on Sunday and Denver on. Wednesday and Phoenix on Friday. Well, and it, it really has become the goal for Bruce Bochy and Mark Gardner to get his confidence back. I mean, that's the one guy. That is a, a, a job description where it says you cannot fail. There's no margin for error. You can't give up a win. You've got to be perfect. And it's hard to keep your confidence to, you know, to assume that role. Strikes out Johnny Peralta two away. And when you have one blow and save, it erodes your confidence. When you have three. And on one road trip in a row it, it can it can bury you confidence wise. So you know you, you separate them for a little bit get them out of the environment. And then bring them back after a couple days and rebuild them mentally. And that's what they're doing he, like I say they're, they're going to need him to say he has to he has to save some games. You think so they'll, they'll reinsert him at some point here and the Absolutely. closer role. Absolutely. But I, I do still believe they're going to do closer by committee. But I do believe that he's also going to get chances to go out there and do it. And if he runs a couple str a string where he gets two or three in a row, well, guess what? Now you have a guy with his confidence back. Well, after he blew the save last Friday, and he's pitching well tonight, 0-2 for Randall Gritchick. Hunter Strickland had the four-out save Sunday in Arizona, but then Hunter Strickland blew the save. Or actually, it was. Uh, Blown later after Hunter Strickland set it up. Stephen Okert actually blew it on the home run. Look at Casilla go right through him here. One, two, three, eighth inning, the last two out via the strikeout. Richard, pair of shoes there. Spain will lead it off as we go to the bottom of the eighth.
of everything orange and black check out Giants pregame live and Giants postgame live before and after every regular season Giants telecast on CSN Bay Area authentic Bay Area sports and we'll have a Giants pregame live for you tomorrow at 530 on CSN Bay Area before the 605 game three of the series Giants exploding against young Luke Weaver a six spot in the third to knock it out Mike Matheny goes back to his bullpen left hander Dean Kikheffer is in. Hey Hunter Pence, it's my eighth birthday. Well, happy birthday, meet. And there is Dean Kikheffer. 19th time he's come in. 11 strikeouts in, uh, in 15 and two thirds. It's our first chance to get a look at him. Likewise for Denard Span. Spain on base twice tonight, both with walks, scored a run, scored the Giants' first run. He got that six run third started with a one out walk against Luke Weaver. And you can see the sidearm delivery from the left hander. It'll be Tomlinson will get in that bat waiting on deck. So tomorrow night, Jeff Samarja. And he has seen a lot of the St. Louis Cardinals in his career being a former Chicago Cub will make his 21st career appearance against him in 10th career start. And it'll be Mike Leak. Former Giant who they traded for last year giving up Adam Dunn to get him from the Reds. Signed with the Cardinals this offseason. Just coming back Mike Leak with a bout of shingles. Don't hear of too many 28 year olds getting shingles. You got to the 28th rookie year. Did you really? Oh yeah. I'm itching just thinking of it. What, what is it like to have shingles? Not fun. What is it like a skin rash? No. No, it's just like a. Uh, I mean, you could get them anyway. Tony La Russa a couple years ago had them in his eye. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, now you mentioned it. But I had them underneath my uh, arm, into my back, and it was just uh, a patch of. There was no rash or anything like that. It was just pain. Buster Posey had it about uh, three years ago. Like your skin just burns? Well, no, it's, it's, all, it's deeper than that. And for a baseball player, it's catastrophic. I mean, you can't, you can't perform. Tomlinson pops out, two outs. Yeah. Well, usually old people got shingles. Well, I mean, <laughs> and ball players. <laughs> But it is an issue when you uh, have high stress situations. And, I mean, there's a number of things that can set it off, but it's not fun. Doesn't sound fun. They put Mike Leake, who's, as we found out, I mean, he's tough as nails, put him on the DL. Shut him down. He will pitch tomorrow against Samarja. That's going to be a huge game. Well, he's definitely throwing great. I mean, that's one thing about Samarja. He can't wait for his next start. When he's done pitching, he's he can't wait for five days. He has been that good. And he's got a couple of surprises for the Cardinals that they haven't seen. A newborn curveball and a changeup to go with high velocity sink and cut. Three and one to Angel Pagan. Angels walked twice tonight. Scored a run. Miss this one well to center. It'll be run down by Gritchick. One, two, three. For kickoff. Where we go to the ninth. Matt Reynolds will pitch trying to end this. Giants up eight to two.
Sportsnet Central every night at 10:30 p.m. CSN Authentic Bay Area Sports. Turn them on right after the game. Sean Estes will be in studio breaking this one down with a lengthy post-game Giants edition of uh, Sportsnet Central. Matt Reynolds will pitch the ninth. Trevor Brown is in to catch it. So Matt Reynolds, sixth time that he has come in and uh, pitch for Bruce Bruce Bochy. He's done a good job. He's a four pitch guy. He's been around. I mean, he absolutely knows what he's doing out there. The two types of fastball, curveball, slider, and a changeup. Mike Matheny has sent up Colton Wong to pinch hit. Cardinals starting second baseman last night. Probably see him tomorrow night against Jeff Samarja. Gregor Blanco just reinstated off the disabled list has gone to left. Gorky's Hernandez has gone to right. And as we noted, Trevor Brown is in to catch the ninth. The fan has gotten loose out in right center field. I think we have two fans loose. Saw this at the Niners game on Monday night. Nice open field tackle. Friday night. Full moon. Yeah. Bound to happen. Looks like the guard may have got hurt. I mean, that guy's going to spend the night in jail. I mean, it's just a rough night. It's unnecessary. I don't care how big the belt was. Security guard has hurt his leg. Right foot. Too bad. I don't see that a lot of Giants games, hardly ever. Yeah, it doesn't happen very often. That's a good thing. Matt Reynolds back to work against Colton Wong. Pitch is high, two balls, one strike. Kenley Jansen has gone in uh, for the Dodgers pitching the bottom of the ninth in Arizona. And Chris Owens just tripled with one out. Brandon Belt over to the railing will retire. Colton Wong. One out in the ninth inning. Very nice. It was a great scene when Santiago Casilla walked off the mound, got in the Giants dugout, and everybody went over there and embraced him. They know that he's fighting through a, a little spell. To see it through the ball beautifully tonight. This was the reaction that the Giants gave him when he came into that clubhouse or into the dugout. They need him. Yeah. And pitched in a week, but he had a tremendous outing. A one, two, three, eighth inning. Martinez pops this one out of play. Sergio Romo has gone down to the giant bullpen as you look at the uh, video what Mike was talking about every single guy on the bench with a fist or a casino. Well I mean they really are his biggest fans outside of his family of course but they can all commiserate with what he went through. We've all gone through that. It, baseball's a game of failure. You're going to have some tough times. There's Romo. Paul Goldschmidt just hit a shot to the warning track. It was caught for a sacrifice fly. Owen scored. Well, the Dodger lead is down to three to two in the bottom of the ninth. And uh, two outs, nobody on base in the inning. Mets one behind 
seven scoreless for Bartolo Colon. Back to back homers from Jose Reyes as Rubel Cabrera. That'll be out of play. So if the Giants get these last two outs, they'll stay a game up on the Mets. They'll go up three on the Cardinals. And we'll see how the Dodger game goes. If they win, Giants stay four back if they get these last two outs. Two two pitch up the middle. Panic will circle it. Shoot him out. Nicely done. Two outs. Nicely done indeed. Nice angle on that ground ball. My boy circled it. Well, you just sort of come to expect it, but you really shouldn't take it for granted because it is not the normal play. Although they'll tell you, yeah, gotta make that play. Not an easy one. Last batter of the game for the Diamondbacks is Jake Lamb. I think he owes the Giants one, doesn't he? No, oh, that's what we're hoping anyway. Three homers off of Casilla this year. He could take one off of Jansen here and tie that game. He's down a couple of strikes. Garcia fouls it off. Two balls and one strike. Giants 6 2 last night, 8 2 tonight. Samarja so tomorrow night. Everybody standing now. Giants are one strike away. Luke Weaver was dominant the first two innings, got shelled in the third. Buster Posey, his first home run in exactly two months. Well, he's hot. Four hits last night, three hits tonight with that home run you're talking about. And it's how he's doing it, too. He has got his balance in his swing back. Ball four. Reynolds walks Garcia. See what Bochi does with the right hander, Ledmus Diaz. And a step in, will he bring in Sergio Romo? That didn't look like it. Love this time of the year, don't you? Giants Dodgers right down to the very end. Both one out away. Popped him up. Panic out. Span in. Span is under it. Giants win it. They take the first two. Of this huge four game series with the Cardinals Buster Posey seven hits in the two games combined a home run tonight his first in two months. Giants only got seven hits Mike but a lot of walks tonight in that big six run third blew the game open and they went eight to two. Well I mean I think that's very significant in that they won the game that way with a big offensive inning. They've been looking for this type of an early game offensive contribution tonight they got it. And their big man is hot. Buster Posey, a three hit night with a home run. That is huge. All right, for those of you watching on uh, our network affiliates, the Giants Television Network, so long from ATT Park for Mike Kruko and Amy Gutierrez. Greg Papa saying so long. For those of you watching on NBC Bay Area, stay right where you are. A lot more coming your way. Giants beat the Cardinals 8 to 2.